Something special on Below the Radar this time round for all you Triumph fans, and it's a unique Herald hatchback. And if you're wondering, Herald hatchback, they never made one of those. Well, they did make one, and only one, and this is it. Quick recap, the Herald came out in 1959 with a 948 engine, and at first you could buy it only as a coupe or a saloon. A year later, we got a convertible version, and then in 1961 came the Herald 1200. Now this brought an estate and a, a, a courier van version, a commercial version, but still no hatchback. However, in 1965, this car was made, a unique hatchback that Triumph commissioned uh, Michelotti to build in his Turin studios. It's owned by Chris Gunby, who's chairman of the Triumph Sports Six Club here in the UK, um, and it's a fascinating story. How did it come about, Chris? Well, at the time, hatchbacks didn't exist. Triumph decided that they thought that might be the way forward, so a, a saloon, a 1200 saloon was taken off the production line, trailered down to Michelotti's studio, and uh, this was what came back. Then Triumph decided that uh, it wasn't the way forward, so what a big mistake that was really. Yeah, of course by that time hatchbacks were starting to, to be built. The Austin A40 Countryman is the obvious uh, uh, Pina Farina styled English built um, uh, hatchback, although it's more of a little uh, estate. So what's really interesting about this is that the left hand side and the right hand side have a, a different window treatment. Yeah. We don't know what brief Michelotti was given simply to come up with a hatchback based yeah. on the Herald. Yeah. Okay, so what's unique about this car and what is carried over from the... Well, was it based on a saloon rather than the coupe, you said? It was based on a 1200 saloon. Saloon, okay. Yeah. Uh, so what is retained from that and what's new? Well, anything up to the top of the wings is standard 1200. Then this new panel has been put in with the light. And then the roof line, I presume, was made of some sort of a state roof. Right. It's slightly longer than a saloon roof. Uh, and then the hatchback was obviously is a one-off piece. Using the struts from a Herald Estate. Okay, yeah. Um, and then you've got the fold-down seat, which is obviously unique. And the, uh, whatever that's called. Parcel shelf. Parcel shelf. The parcel yeah. shelf, yeah. Okay. And the parcel shelf is just two halves of board covered in vinyl and that's it. Each side is different and each side has unique glass. That's right. Especially for this. Yeah. This is the original tailgate glass. As but, the two sides are as well. But you don't know what it came from. No idea. But you, but you don't think it was made specially. You think it was from some contemporary car. Yeah, I imagine it would be some, from some Italian car at the time. Right, okay. Um, lots of bits and bobs on the car, lots of trim. Headlining was all Italian at the time, which was quite a, an object when we were trying to restore it. We were obviously finding out what was just left around on the factory floor, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Um, the side over here opens like so and the other side is fixed with an air vent and a chrome air vent um, and yeah completely different lots of people see the car and don't realize it's different yeah until it's pointed out yeah same here i, I didn't realize until someone pointed out to me at a show um, because you can only see one side at a time of course and interestingly it's about 50 50 people like both sides yeah they both work yeah um, so is it standard Herald from the B pillar forward? Yes. It's, it's only this bit yes, that's, it is. that's unique? Yeah. Okay. Um, and how did you come to buy it? Well, that's a long story. Um, in very late 80s, early 90s, there was a picture in Classic and Sports Car of Herald Hatchback, Did It Survive? And it was a, um, a photoshopped picture because it had only got one strut. Right, okay. And uh, with my interest in Triumphs, I just sort of started thinking, does it survive? Started asking around, no one had ever seen it. And then after a few years, I spoke to a guy and he said, oh yeah, he said, I know where it is. I've, I've seen it before. Uh, there's not much left of it. But he wouldn't tell me where it was. Mm. And I kept asking him and asking him and he wouldn't tell me. And then about Oh, probably 10, 12 years later, I bought quite a few spare parts off him. And I thought, this is my chance. If he doesn't tell me now, he's never going to tell me. So 
I asked the question again and he said, oh, I'll find the guy's name out for you, uh, which he duly did a week or so later. And uh, I rang this gentleman up out the blue and just said, are you the guy that's got the Herald hatchback? And uh, he said, yes, I have. I said, well, can I come and have a look at it? No intention of buying it. I just wanted to see what it was. Uh, and we made an arrangement for the following Tuesday and uh, off I drove to Shropshire and uh, pulled up at the house, just a normal estate house and uh, looked down the garden and there was a car in the garage, the door was open. I thought, well, that's quite a big shape. You know, it's bigger than I thought it was going to be. And as we got further down the garden, I realised it was a Volvo 121. I stood there, I thought, where the hell's the car? And then he said, careful, you're nearly treading on it. And uh, it literally was into the ground to its wings near enough, just completely rotted out. All the, everything had just completely gone. He knew what he'd got, so he'd taken everything off that was unique, all the glass, all the trim and everything, that was all put away in the garage, but the actual shell was just completely rotten. Um, and in that time, in that week since the phone call, he'd found out who I was and he knew what I did with the club and everything. And uh, he said to me, you know, if you restore it, you can have it. Sounds like there wasn't a lot for him to give you though. Exactly. And who else would have taken it on? Exactly. Probably not many people. Nobody. Yeah. Uh, maybe had I known what it was going to be involving and the cost, I probably wouldn't have done it either. But there's no regrets now. And, and what? What of this is original? Presumably you had to start with a 1200 saloon and put some bits on it. Yeah, so because, well of course there's the dilemma isn't it? You've got a styling concept that you want to make as original as possible with something that there's nothing left of. Mm. So yeah, we went out and bought a really, really good 1200 saloon uh, and then everything that is hatchback prototype is the original bit but with lots of new metal in it. This was all mended, the roof was mended. We did to try and keep it as, you know, so it is what it is. Um, the trim, we've used as much trim as we can. We've used the original glass. We've had everything restored that we possibly dared. Certain things we haven't touched. You know, the little bracket over here on the window, we didn't even dare take it apart because it's so delicate. Mm. Didn't want it to break. This side, the vent was remade and re-chromed, but it is the original vent. Um, it actually cost me six bottles of wine, um, and it's the hopefully they were expensive bottles of wine. They were bottles of wine, <laughs> <laughs> and it's the only car I've ever picked up in a pickup truck. The remains of it in a pickup yeah, truck. Presumably. We didn't take uh, a trailer because there was literally so little left of it. We were picking it up and putting it on. So, so it's it's not the original chassis or floor pans or any no, of the structure. No, there was structure. nothing left of that. Right. Right. So everything, but because it was a random 1200 that was picked off the line, this is you know another yeah. random 1200 that was picked up. Yes, because because there was nothing unique about the prototype chassis or floor pans. It was no. all standard production. Yeah. Yeah. So mechanically, it's exactly the same as the original exactly the same. in every way. Yeah. It was just a box standard 1200 saloon. So that was in 2007. 2007. Yeah. Okay. And then when did you get it? Back on the road. How long did it on take you to rebuild it? On the way back from my trip to uh, Shropshire, which is a couple of hours, I rang my very good friend up Mark Field at Jigsaw. Yeah. Yeah. And said, uh, "Guess what I've just been to see." And then the next two hours, a whole phone call all the way home. We decided we we're going to restore it at his premises, and uh, that's what happened. It took two years, and it was ready for its unveiling at the 50th anniversary at the TSSC International Event at Stafford in 2009. So the restoration took just under two years. So they did an amazing job. Right, and since then it's had not that much use. No. Because you've got too many other cars to drive. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's actually done 1,600 miles in 11 years. But it's done a hell of a lot more miles on the back of low loaders onto <laughs> uh, shows where it, you know, that's, it's a bit of a trailer queen, really. And what's it like to drive? 
it dries exactly like a 1200 saloon. Yeah, as you'd expect. Um, and I'm fortunate enough, as you say, I've got other vehicles, so I can drive a 1200 saloon without taking this out and putting it into danger, really. So do you have any idea of why it didn't go into production? Well, in 1965, hatchbacks didn't really exist. The first British proper hatchback was the Maxi, wasn't it? Yeah, 69. Um, and the Renault 16. Which is 65. Yeah. Or six. 65 yeah. or six, I think it's 65. So around that time, hatchbacks were starting to become a bit yeah, more popular. a bit more popular. And yeah. it was something that hadn't really happened before. So, yeah, it was, it's a well thought out car and it works pretty well. It's just that this is way too high to lift stuff into. Okay, so that's a standard door handle, not that's from a, a Herald. That's a Herald Estate. A Herald Estate. Door handle. Right, okay. And these are Herald Estate struts. Okay. And the parcel shelf is unique to this, but it's just a couple of pieces, pieces of, of trim, board, yep. trimmed fibre board. Okay, so you can put that down there. And so, yeah, it's quite a, a deep boot. Although, does this offer anything that the estate doesn't? Bearing in mind that with the estate, you can fold the seats down and then you've got... Really easily. Yeah, yeah. whereas this, you've got this very deep well here. Well, yeah. you can hide a body in it quite, quite well. You know, Once the back seat's folded down, Okay, so how does Which, that work then? That just goes like that. Okay. And the bar comes out. And, and then you down. can remove that all together. Yeah. So, you can, so you've got a bit of it. Or you can leave it like that because it's yeah. just all trimmed out. Yeah, okay. So it's a bit more versatile than obviously a saloon and not quite as good as a, uh, an estate, I would say. And but, I suppose there's your answer. People would just buy an estate, yeah. I guess. Yeah, absolutely. So this is the original colour scheme, presumably? Blue yeah, with blue? Absolutely as original as we could get it, yeah. Bearing in mind it was a prototype, how did it come to be sold off rather than scrapped? Well, it was bought by an employee via the uh, Standard Triumph employee scheme, so they obviously got it at a cheap rate. Um, but I have a photograph of it in 1970, already defunct. So it didn't right. last five years because it obviously wasn't sealed properly being a prototype. It wasn't meant to be on the road. So hence why the rust took over really, really early. Um, the photographs I've got of it in 1970 are in Coventry. So it hadn't gone far. It's sitting on four oil drums. And apparently the guy that bought it off the original owner was going to put a Vitesse engine in it but obviously it was far too gone, even at that point, to do that. So it was then lifted off the oil drums and put in an asbestos garage and sat on earth for the next 20 years. And, and the guy you bought it from, he's not the Triumph employee, presumably. No. He acquired it later on. He bought it out of that garage where it sat for 20 years. Already as a wreck. Already as a wreck, and then right. put it in his garden. As an ornament, by the sounds of it. Stripped it off, absolutely. <laughs> stripped all the uh, unique bits off it and then was going to do it one day but obviously time takes over doesn't it so if you hadn't turned up at his door presumably it would have never been seen again it would have Absolutely. just disappeared yeah and uh, yeah there was very little left of the original car to say all the, luckily all the unique bits are on the top so they're the bits that have survived right okay um the guy that i bought it off or gave him six bottles of wine for and that guy called Steve, he's a really, really nice guy, he's over the moon that it's been done. And he actually unveiled it with me at the uh, show at Stafford.